Hi, this is Dr. Steve Ganjami, and in the second part of the shoulder girdle injury treatment and prevention video, I want to talk about the more powerful, stronger muscles of the shoulder girdle that many people injure or they're weakened, so they end up with a rotator cuff issue, but we need to treat and assess the actual more powerful muscles that support the shoulder girdle. Let's do it. Okay, so aside from the rotator cuffs, again, that are very common injured muscles since they're trying to stabilize, but the rotator cuffs tend to fail because they're working harder than what they should because the more powerful muscles of the shoulder girdle area are not working properly. So in other words, you're lacking a big, thick, strong, powerful muscle that's not working as well as efficiently as it should because there's some muscular imbalance, and now the rotator cuff is having to work harder than it would like to, and you end up injuring it again unless you actually fell and, and tore a muscle. So the, a few of the really important muscles, they're all important, but a few of the ones that a lot of people are using, especially when they're climbing, are your serratus muscles. These are the muscles that sit over uh, your ribs. They look like finger muscles. You can really see them in, in bodybuilders and really um, basically someone who's really ripped lean. You can see them sit over your ribs and they're gonna basically a lot of people think about them, especially anatomy books, they talk about pushing, and I can feel mine as I push out like this and really put pressure on my serratus muscles, but they also really stabilize, stabilize your scapula. If I'm pushing down like this, and I'm, if I had resistance against this hand here and I'm pushing down, I'm gonna really feel my serratus muscles move. So obviously these are big time important if you're climbing, if you're pushing, even if it's just a push-up type motion. And um, what else? Any striking, any combative issues, you're gonna be using your serratus muscles along with a lot of your rotator cuffs. And uh, crawling exercises and climbing, that's where you're really gonna use a lot of serratus. So you can look for those trigger points up in there. The, the connective tissue, the fascia, which is that thick matrix, web-like matrix of connective, connective tissue that integrates all your muscles, uh, basically is going to, with your serratus especially, is going to link up very closely with your subscapularis, which is that rotator cuff muscle. So any stuff in here, you're having trouble moving and pushing down, pressing, think uh, subscapularis, think serratus. Going over to the backside, a really powerful muscle that we have is our rhomboid that helps to press our, 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 um, our arm in and really stabilize our scapula this way. That muscle is basically here in between our spine and our shoulder blade. So these muscles are really helping to really stabilize your scapula give you the proper amount of range of motion and, and, and mobility of your scapula that a lot of people lack. So then they end up you know, losing, the, uh, losing the ability to do a certain sport or a certain uh, type of motion and they end up injuring it. So you want those scapulas to be moving very freely. Again, your, your shoulder blades, if you're looking at someone from the back, and if you notice that maybe, or if you, if you have someone else look at you, you might notice that one's moving very freely and the other one, eh, not so great then you have some instability in that area and you can look for trigger points in that rhomboid, again, in between the spine and the scapula or the serratus or coming around to the side, your powerful deltoid muscle, which a lot of people consider or they think about when they say their shoulder, they usually mean the deltoid, which is this type of motion right here, elevating, uh, abducting, bringing your arm out to the side, all the way down right to the side of my arm here and, and, and that, that part of my actual shoulder. Don't forget about your pecs from the front. Just like your serratus for pressing, you've got your pecs. They make up a big portion of your uh, shoulder girdle. We kind of think of them as just uh, front muscles as, as your chest muscles, but they really have a lot to do with the motion of your, of your shoulder girdle and the support of your shoulder girdle. So I've seen a lot of people have a shoulder blade or a shoulder blade instability issue, and they say, hey, I've injured my shoulder, but it's not, it's actually a pec injury. And you have three pectoralis muscles way in the front here, and you can go and poke around there. If you're a woman, look out for the breast tissue, but just stay way up here off the breast tissue and get in the muscle. And you can just hold that area. Again, feel if it's tender or anywhere in there and move your arm around. Shoulder blade feels better, then go with that. Last muscle I wanna mention because it's actually really important and a lot of people don't think about it because it has to do with your biceps. Biceps, mean, bi means two. So for biceps muscles, we have two muscles and everybody tends to think of their short head of their bicep because we think about curling and lifting or even a pull-up type motion but actually the long head of their, your bicep is really what's important here. Not that the short head isn't, but in terms of elevating your shoulder and the connection between your elbow and your shoulder. So your bicep tendon starts right up um, in the top part of your humerus, the top part of the, your upper arm bone and goes through a very, uh, depending on you, it can go through a very shallow or, or a very deep groove, the bicipital groove. And some people, if yours is more shallow, you really will never know unless you have surgery on the area. Um, you can have that bicipital tendon slip out a lot because of instability in the, sh in the shoulder. 
as a result of any other of the muscles that are going on in that shoulder that we just talked about, your serratus, your subscapularis, or any of the rotator cuff muscles. So if you have problems elevating the shoulder like this, you gotta sort of think outside the box on this like we do with a lot of injuries and not just focus and compartmentalize the area and think about, oh, it's, the pain is just right here, I need to only look right there. But in this case, look even way down just below the, the groove of your, um, your elbow where your, where your upper and lower arm come together and uh, that's where the, the long head of the bicep inserts. So you can look for a trigger point in there and feel if it's tender in there, rub it out, or even if you just held it for a second or two and then elevated your arm. And if you notice that your shoulder feels better, again, it doesn't have to have any, you don't have to have any pain in your elbow, but if your shoulder feels better with elevation, then you know you have a problem with your long head, with the long head of your bicep. And uh, you'll see some pretty great, some pr great improvements with that. So you gotta think outside the box again, think about, maybe how your elbow is functioning and, and your scapula especially um, and all the muscles surrounding your shoulder blade. Didn't discuss them all right now, but it's a good place to get started so you can hopefully uh, heal up a uh, chronic shoulder injury, a bad shoulder that you may have or a weakness if you're climbing a lot and you notice one side stronger than the other. You can look at these things, give yourself a little self-assessment and self-treatment with no harm done. But again, if something's not getting better, if it's an acute injury, make sure you have that checked out by your uh, healthcare professional so you know you, you didn't um, you know, tear something or break, break something and you're trying to treat a fracture, that wouldn't be a good thing. Good luck.